everyone, welcome to Monday the 11th of May and I really hope that you had a lovely bank holiday weekend. I hope that you were able to look at some of the materials that were sent through on the Spirit of Duncombe about VE Day. Maybe you did some bunting, maybe you had a picnic, uh, uh, perhaps you got involved in some way and I'm sure you would have seen many of the lovely things that were on the television as well to commemorate the end of the Second World War and VE Day and all of the joy and happiness that the end of that period of time brought. And I think actually really encouraging for all of us uh, because uh, whilst we're in the midst of something tricky and difficult, what history does tell us is that those periods of time do come to an end and happiness and peace and joy are restored. So I hope you had a really happy and peaceful and joyful weekend. Well, today I want to talk to you a little bit about art. Now, I want to start by saying I'm not an artist. I don't have a great artistic ability. In fact, as I reflected on art and why I find it such a joy and an important part of my life, it's not because I have any ability at it. Because the truth is, I really don't. I'm not very good at drawing. I never really was as a child. And it's not something that I've been able to develop as a grown-up but what I have found is that art has given me the opportunity to stop, to think, to ask questions about the world, about myself, about how people interact with one another and often sometimes I just ask the question how did the artist do that? Sometimes I look at pieces of art and they are so exceptionally good I just find myself in awe and asking the question, how on earth did they do that? And so I wanted to talk to you about three paintings. Two of them are paintings by an artist who is still around today. Uh, he's an elderly gentleman and he has embraced modern technology in his art. He's a gentleman called David Hockney. And I want to show you a couple of bits of his work that I've found really really impressive and then what I want to tell you about was a story from when I was a little bit younger in fact when I was at junior school about the age of eight or nine and that's to do with uh, an artist called uh, John Constable who uh, painted many many very famous paintings not very far away from here actually towards the Essex Suffolk border so not a million miles from us here in Hertfordshire uh, and he had a painting called the Hayway and that's the one I want to start by talking to you about. Now you might have seen that and actually I've got my screen here uh, which I want to um, show you and it is a picture of a farmer with a cart and it's full of hay and he's going through uh, a series of uh, uh, water there and it's in a place on the Essex Suffolk uh, border and you can actually go there still and it doesn't look massively different the only thing that's different is the cart has moved you'll be pleased to hear. So why that picture? Well, we were in an art lesson. I was, I was uh, about eight. And the teacher put, uh, uh, I actually had a book and he held up the book and it had a picture of the Haywain in it. Remember I was at school before the internet uh, was around. So we didn't have the, the joys of sticking it up on big screens quite like that. And as he showed us the picture, my friend Robert, who I'd been at school with for years, right from the start of reception, uh, and we actually we went all the way through school into the end of senior school as well. So I knew Robert very, very well. And uh, Robert put his hand up and very energetically said, my grandma's got that picture on her wall. And as he said that, I thought to myself, well, no, she hasn't because my grandma has got that on her wall. So I put my hand up and said, no, no, Robert, she can't have. My grandmother's got that. I saw it yesterday, I was at her house. And he said, well, I was at my grandmother's house this week and I definitely saw it. And we ended up having well, a little bit of a disagreement. And then the teacher very sensibly stopped us. And he asked Robert, how big is the picture on your grandmother's wall? And Robert said, well, it's, you know, it's about this big. It's pretty big. And, and he asked me, and mine was pretty much the same size and it was you know, in a very lovely frame. And he said, yeah, I think what your grandparents have got is a print of the Haywain, because the actual Haywain is in the National Gallery in London, 
and it's of the size of the wall. And you showed us the wall in the classroom. And why do I mention that? Well, because actually, I think that's probably the point that I realized art was really something quite emotive. It provokes a reaction. In this instance, it was, you know, my grandmother owned it. Uh, and my friend Robert thought his grandmother owned it. The truth was they both did, but they were prints. <laughs> uh, the real original was an enormous painting uh, worth millions and millions of pounds. And it was not in our grandmother's living rooms. In fact, it was at the National Gallery. So art, I think, is brilliant because it sparks conversation. It gets ideas going. And I think even as a child, I began to realise that. And I began to see that art was a lovely way of spending some time looking, exploring and thinking, even though I wasn't particularly good at doing it. Now, the second artist that I want to talk to you about is David Hockney. And again, I'm going to show you on the screen. This is one of many paintings that David Hockney did. He did this in the 1960s and it's called The Splash. It's when he was living in California and this was a house that he rented and his friend had just jumped off the end of the springboard there and he captured that moment with the splash that comes from it. Now it's a very different picture to the John Constable that we looked at. And in fact, this gentleman here uh, has produced a whole series of paintings where he really uses these vivid blues. And uh, I had the real privilege and opportunity of going to the Met Museum in New York. You might have been there or you might have seen and heard about it. It's a very big museum, a bit like the National in London, another massive museum. And within it, there is this lovely art gallery and they had an exhibition of Hockney's work. Um, they had what felt like hundreds of them. Um, and it was just such a joy to walk around and look at his work and enjoy it. And I've always liked uh, David Hockney. As I've got older, I definitely find it very relaxing. I like to look at that picture and you can almost imagine yourself sitting by that pool, enjoying the lovely weather, perhaps uh, a nice cold drink and your friends with you, your family. Uh, in my mind, it's a really lovely, relaxing place. I've never been to this villa. I've never had the opportunity to dive into that pool, but I can almost imagine myself there enjoying it. And I think that's the joy of a really good artist's work. They transport you from where you are now to somewhere completely different. But the other reason I really like Hockney is because he, as a gentleman who is now, I believe, in his 80s, so he's uh, not, not a young man anymore, he has discovered the joy of iPads. And in fact, at the moment, he's in France and he has a, a villa in France and he's been working on his um, iPad art. And this isn't one from that time, although he has published it recently. But this is one of the many, many paintings that he's done. This has been painted using a digital pen and an iPad. And I think it's remarkable. And actually, if I just scroll, you can see another one that he has done. And I'll just do one more because he's prolific. That means he just creates many, many pieces of art. Here's another one, all drawn using a digital pen and an iPad. I find that remarkable. And what I love about it is that even though he is a gentleman in his 80s, and you might think, you think, oh, I'm not necessarily sure I want to get involved in something new. Here, there he is at the cutting edge of technology, and he's producing exceptional art that is thought provoking and awe inspiring and brings joy. And I think that that's something about art that Hockney really, really encapsulates. He shows it perfectly in his work. So I mentioned two museums. And at the moment, obviously we can't go out, uh, but you can visit those museums. Uh, both of them have set up virtual tours. So the first one I spoke about was the National Gallery. And I'm hoping that as I show this to you on the screen, there's a link to the National Gallery. But if you can't find it on the screen, then don't worry. You just have to type in National Gallery virtual tour. And there you can go as if you were physically in the building and look at all the different pieces of art, including the constable painting. But there's also, through the miracle of the internet, the ability to go right across the Atlantic Sea and into the Met in New York, again, without having to leave our homes. And there is a brilliant page, which is uh, called Kids and Families, 
and it's all about art and design at the Met. And you can go into that. Again, if you can't see the link, don't worry. Just go to Metropolitan Museum of Art. And if you follow the links, you'll see that there is a really, really good opportunity to look at some of the different things, particularly focused actually for children. So art, perhaps you'll get the chance this week to explore your favourite pieces of art. Perhaps you'll get the chance to explore some of the work of David Hockney, of John Constable, or many, many other artists that there are. There are countless numbers of phenomenally brilliant artists, both men and women from now and ages past. And that is the joy of art that you can get fully involved. So perhaps have that conversation with your family, perhaps find out who your parents really like uh, in terms of artists, which work do they like? Do they like modern art? Do they like classical uh, work? Is there a particular artist that they particularly enjoy? Have that conversation. Good, so I'm going to ask you to put your hands together and eyes closed, just as we do at the end of each assembly. And if you'd like to join me, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lovely. Enjoy today, enjoy this week, work hard, keep it going. Thanks so much for the really positive feedback that you've given us. I know that's a real boost to the teachers who are working extremely hard. Have a lovely week and I'll speak to you again on Friday. Bye now.